So, we have to preface this video by opening with- I don't know why I need to explain this, but some people are gonna see the title and be like, But this game stole from this game! And we- we get it. This is nothing new in the gaming industry especially. Developers are constantly being inspired by one another, and in some cases, even going so far as to directly copy and paste an idea. Yes, it's technically stealing. Yes, it's also simultaneously technically not stealing and also kind of inspiration for reasons, Fred. Reasons? What do you mean? Reasons, Fred. Reasons. Oh, okay. Yeah, that totally me. That totally explains everything. You definitely didn't just say nothing at all. So anyway, here are some things in Fortnite that's inspiration was a little less clean cut than an inspired idea. Welcome back to Top 5 Gaming, everyone. Drop a like on this video and subscribe to immediately win a $25 scratch off from 7-Eleven only and only after losing an initial $100 on buying the scratch offs. Don't fall victim to the poor man's tax, lads. It always wins. And with that, let's get right into the... What channel was this again? Number 10, 3D Map Marker from Realm Royale. In the beginning of Fortnite, when the OG factories were slowly being discovered as one of the best locations in the game, everything was a lot more simple. In this specific case, it's the map markers are sometimes also called map waypoints, and they aren't as advanced as you see today. You'd mark an area on your map, and the map marker would appear on everyone else's map and the compass at the top of the screen. It did the job it was supposed to, but sometimes it would take a different perspective to notice something obvious and extremely helpful. On the 5th of June, Realm Royale was released. Their map marking system was fairly similar, yet with an added feature. When an area of the map was marked, it would leave a giant beam of light leading up into the air, allowing you and your teammates to focus in on a target or location without having to check your map. It's extremely useful for a lot of different scenarios, and it's not surprising to see Fortnite later that month on the 27th, also implementing the same feature into their own game. Number 9 chests from Minecraft Hunger Games. You see a lot of references to skins and easter eggs within Fortnite, but sometimes it's the little things that go unnoticed. I don't know about you guys, but I've never looked at chests and thought, I wonder what the inspiration behind that is. Well, apparently someone did, or it just stumbled through my brain as they saw a chest because one of the biggest theories is that the idea came from Minecraft, and more specifically, mini games within Minecraft like the Hunger Games. You would have to hunt around the map looking for hidden chests and get random loot out of them, and now that I think about it, the theory makes a lot of sense. The chests have a similar look, except one's high quality and one looks like a single pixel, and the two games are fairly similar already, so you can see how a lot of ideas may have originally started from Minecraft. Number 8, Nevermore and Raven Skins. Overwatch definitely ranks amongst the popular games for the last couple of years, and it seems like Fortnite may have found some inspiration. So much, in fact, they more or less copy and pasted the character model over. Which character are we talking about? Well, the Raven. In Overwatch, you have a character called Nevermore, or a Raven-like being. Look familiar? That's because when you put the Nevermore Raven next to Fortnite Raven, they more or less look identical, but just with each game's unique style added to them. The Raven in Fortnite even has a description that reads, Fear the Storm Nevermore. An obvious direct reference and mini in-game shoutout to Overwatch's Nevermore. Supposedly, that isn't the only thing they've used from Overwatch, though. Supposedly, the exact same spray paint mechanic was originally used in Overwatch, and now Fortnite's using it. Well, anyway, me personally, I'm a fighter for freedom of information, so if using mechanics from another game can improve the experience for everyone, then why not? Also, please don't sue Fortnite. Actually, may maybe sue them. Don't sue them. They have a lot of money. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying, don't sue anyone. Play nice, guys. Number 7. Creative Mode for Minecraft. So how many of you have been having fun with the new Creative Mode on Fortnite? Oh, what's that? You never played it? Get out. If you have any awesome maps you want to show us, then you can tag us on Twitter and we'll take a look. And if there are any hardcore Minecraft fans out there, that happened to enjoy Fortnite 2, then you've most likely been testing out this new creative mode. Obviously, at its beta stage, it's extremely buggy, but it's a game mode we've all wanted for a long time and it probably wouldn't exist without Minecraft. Minecraft kicked off the building scene for games and having multiple maps to build on, save, and keep working on to create masterpieces, which was brilliant. So when Fortnite came out with a heavily building-based game, it's not surprising to see building worlds being introduced for epic games in the form of creative mode. Dude, Dude look at the 50 gifted gift songs. <laughs> Oh my god, yo, this is the guy, this was the guy that I just, I retweeted his video, dude, this guy's a legend, man, he just made, he, uh, in the new creative mode of Fortnite, did my face. I retweeted his thing, and he's got over 242,000 views already, so his video blew up, hopefully he gets some traction, man. 
Number six is the Arcane skin and Widowmaker from Overwatch. During this year's Halloween, we had a couple new skins make their way into the shop. The Spider Knight and the Arcane skins. Now these skins are modeled after spiders, so technically I shouldn't be interested in them, but Fortnite add that magic touch and made some awesome looking skins. The female version though looks surprisingly familiar to once again, another Overwatch character. When you compare Widowmaker from Overwatch to the Fortnite Arcane skin, you can see they do look pretty much exactly alike. The color theme is definitely different, but a lot of the main ideas and shapes are too similar to not notice the resemblance. I think we can all agree what the real difference is here, and that's that Widowmaker is thick. Number five, the healing system. In PUBG, you can only heal from bandages to a certain point. Then you have to have an energy drink or full med kit to heal. It was done in PUBG first, and by now you're probably all used to the healing system within Fortnite. Bandages will heal your HP up to 75. A med kit will get you to 100, and then you also have the shield system. But for this copy, it's mostly about the heals. Now, if you haven't played Player Unknown Battlegrounds, then you might not know that their healing system is more or less identical. But obviously, PUBG has been around a fair bit longer. You also have bandages that slowly get you to 75%. There's also a med kit, which will max out your HP. And PUBG even have another healing type called the first aid kit that will replenish you to 75 health in one use. It seems like some ideas are just too good to mess around with. And this was one of those few styles that got more or less copy and pasted. Number four, supply drops. Something you have to remember is that this isn't about picking apart Fortnite. It's about comparing similarities to the game. All artists, including designers and developers, get their inspiration from somewhere, including similar games they enjoy themselves. After all, the Battle Royale scene is finally getting the attention it deserves, and it's nice to see how the different gaming companies learn from one another. Something pretty much every company can agree on with a Battle Royale mode is supply drops. PUBG were one of the first to bring this in with the red supply crates that parachutes in, dropping you some legendary yet random loot. Fortnite made their own take on it in the form of a blue crate coming down on a balloon and once again dropping legendary yet random loot. They're definitely incredibly useful to the game mode, so you can be fairly sure to see supply crates in nearly every Battle Royale game you play. Number three, the storm. Some features though can't help but all be based around the same core mechanic. An easy example of this is the Fortnite Storm, the H1Z1 toxic gas cloud, and the PUBG Blue Zone. The fact is the developers need to create a way to push everyone into a confined space gradually throughout the game. Now, if they created a shield or a storm that instantly killed players, too many people would get caught by surprise, which would result in less actual combat. And if they didn't bother with the closing circle at all, then the games would go on forever. Unless a new method was created, it seems there's only one known option. What you have as a result is every major Battle Royale game using a poison mechanic all in their own unique way. In H1Z1, the toxic cloud slowly kills you. The same with the PUBG Blue Zone, just as it is with Fortnite's own Storm. You know what I'd like to see, though? A wall that literally just pushes you as it moves in. No more death to a storm, which also means increased combat. Not to mention that getting shoved through the map by a giant wall wouldn't be pretty neat. Imagine if you were in the middle of battling some guy and suddenly you're both shooting each other stuck flat against this giant iceberg of a wall. Number two, 100 total players per match. So this is probably one of the biggest things within recent online gaming that players have wanted. 100 man lobbies, one player left standing. I mean, who doesn't want to test their gaming skill out against such a massive lobby? Well, unfortunately for console players, this was just out of reach for some time. PUBG was the first to bring out the 100 man battle royales, but it was only on PC at the time. The closest console players that got to battle royale was nearing the end of 2017 when PUBG was supposedly coming out on Xbox first and PlayStation later. Now it still hasn't shown up on PlayStation, but it's been on Xbox for almost a year now. However, just before console, we're about to get PUBG in Swoops Fortnite a few months earlier and releases the Fortnite 100 man battle royale mode for console, PC, and all for free. I'm not surprised we haven't seen PUBG on PlayStation since Fortnite gave them that sucker punch. That's gotta hurt. In at number one, we've got dropping from the sky from a parachute and moving vehicle. Okay, I get it, it's a battle royale mode. There's only so much unique you can put into it before it becomes a completely different game mode. But seriously guys, there's more ways to make an entrance into the battle royale island than jumping out of a massive vehicle. Just chuck us down from space on a comet, and we just fly directly down to the map. Instead of little pet back blings, give us giant animals we can ride into the island on like something from World of Warcraft. I don't know, I'm just spitballing, and to be honest, I'm sure guys would come up with some better ideas. But it is a bit strange that the current methods are also similar. Blackout and PUBG are both planes, and even Fortnite isn't too far off with a bus. Although to be fair, the balloon does give it its charm. But that has been our list of the 10 things Fortnite stole from other games. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, push notifications on, and keep it here on Top 5 Gaming.